Vectair, warmth for your comfort zone. Live coast to coast for a Friday. We are Canada's Weather Network. I'm Ann Warnight with the Traveler's Forecast. There are some weather-related delays for tomorrow, certainly across southern areas of B.C. That intense system continues to push uh, southeastward. Perhaps as much as 60 millimeters of rain can be expected into the Howe Sound area. Otherwise, dry and mild across the southern areas of the prairies. We do expect some showers for you into Atlantic Canada. That may slow things down gently, but certainly northwestern Quebec can see up to 10 centimeters of snow and some strong wind gusts as well. Future. The funds will be used to cover agricultural losses as well as those related to the rental of generators and overtime pay for government employees. There is no word yet if more money will be given to Ontario and New Brunswick. Both were hit by the same storm, although the damage was not as severe. It's been another busy day for hydro crews in Ontario. They've been trying to restore power to about 1,500 people in the central part of the province who've been in the dark since earlier this week. A powerful fall storm packing strong winds and heavy snow, that's what's getting the blame for the outages. The good news, most customers should have electricity by late tonight, but about 250 people in remote areas of Perry Sound and Nipissing will have to wait until tomorrow. Another La Nina winter is forecast for southwestern British Columbia. La Nina is characterized by unusually cold water temperatures in the southern Pacific Ocean. For B.C., this can mean cooler than normal temperatures and heavy snow. Ski hills in the Vancouver area that were hit with record snowfall last winter are now gearing up for another busy season. Oganabosi reports. In the ski industry, the general consensus is the more snow, the better. And while last year's record snowpack meant some local hills stayed open until the end of July, it also meant results like this, broken light standards, bent and toppled trees, and collapsed buildings. And Environment Canada says it could all happen again this year. It is another La Nina year, and um, what that means is uh, normally a La Nina year brings cooler temperatures and lots of snow. Mount Seymour in North Vancouver saw five times its normal snowpack last winter. That's more snow than accumulated on Whistler and Blackcomb. It came as a complete surprise. Well, that's the thing that's always taken for granted is snow. Snow, if you have a tremendous snow year, uh, right off the bat, everybody says, well, you've just had a fabulous skiing year. Obviously, snow is good for a ski hill. Too much snow is not. Mount Seymour purchased additional snow grooming equipment in preparation for another La Nina winter. And they're not the only ones. At North Vancouver's Cypress Mountain, they're not taking any chances. Last year, with the amount of snow we had, we just couldn't keep track of, of the snowfalls up there. So this year, we've got an official uh, Environment Canada weather station up there that's going to help uh, keeping those kinds of records and tracking the snow dumps that we expect to get. The Ministry of Transportation and Highways moved their weather station from the peak of Cypress Mountain to Mid Mountain because too much snow last year repeatedly damaged it. But the weather station that Cypress is erecting should fare much better even in similar conditions. With our weather station it's more temporary and we, can, we pick the whole thing up and move it up as the snow climbs up. Something bolted to the ground has a lot of pressure on it and snow leaning against it all year long. And if the forecasters are right, there won't be a shortage of snow this winter. For the Weather Network, I'm Ogan Abosi in North Vancouver.
South of the border, U.S. President Bill Clinton is pledging more financial help for victims of Hurricane Floyd. He's asking the Federal Emergency Management Agency for nearly $430 million. North Carolina, New Jersey, and several other states were devastated by Floyd. The money would be used to relocate people living on floodplains. September's Hurricane Floyd came ashore in North Carolina, soaking the state with 500 millimeters of rain. That caused widespread flooding that destroyed thousands of homes and badly damaged many more. Floodwaters continue to rise in Vietnam after almost a week of heavy rain. Rescue workers are racing to evacuate people in some of the hardest hit areas, many of whom have been stranded for days. One million people live in the affected areas, and so far, more than 300 have died because of the high waters. There is a shortage of food, and continuing poor weather is slowing down relief missions. And finally, it's been a week since a massive cyclone devastated northeastern India, and many people there are still waiting for aid. Millions are going hungry and don't even have clean drinking water. Sunny, dry weather today did help crews trying to reach some isolated areas, but the, the government says so far less than 70% of those who have been affected by the cyclone have received any supplies. That's Earthwatch News for this half hour. I'm Suzanne Leonard-Felice. Your local forecast is next.